Hi everyone, I am having a latte here with a legend. I'm here with the author of Legends of Latte, Travis Baldry. I think most of you probably know who he is at this point, but Travis, could you tell me briefly what your book is about? Legends and Lattes is a cozy fantasy book, which is about a 40-year-old uh, barbarian orc who, in, who decides she's done adventuring and retires to open a coffee shop in a city that's never heard of coffee. And I love that. I read that book earlier this year. It's one of my favorites. It's really, really good. And what I loved about it is it just gave me so many cozy feelings. There's one other book that I can think of when I think about cozy fantasy, which is The House in the Cerul Cerulean Sea, and um, definitely gave me the same vibe. So I was just wondering, like, I feel like cozy fantasy probably has quite a bright future ahead of it. But what do you think? Do, do you think cozy fantasy is just going to keep continuously to grow? Um, is this the next big thing in fantasy? I think there'll definitely be more of it. I actually think it kind of already existed. In my mind, I think Terry Pratchett is almost like the progenitor of most cozy fantasy. You think about something like Going Postal, about, you know, someone starting a post office in a fantasy world where we're thinking about, you know, people and more mundane stuff. And then you've got Becky Chambers, you've got uh, T.J. Kingfisher, or uh, T. Kingfisher, and again, you know, like House on the House in the Cerulean Sea. It's been a couple years of COVID now. I think largely people would like to read some stuff that's a little more comforting, a little more personal, and maybe the stakes are a little bit lower than what we're used to. Well, I find it very interesting to see how many people that love, like, high fantasy with high stakes also seem to love your book and um, so you seem to have yeah just hit like that spot so how has your life changed since you published Legends of Latte? It's gotten a lot busier it's gotten a lot busier so I'm a full-time audiobook narrator I'm still a full-time audiobook narrator most of the changes have really been positive though because the response to the book has been more than I ever expected um, it certainly wasn't something I planned and people have just been genuinely wonderful and nice. The amount of fan art I've got is insane and makes me smile every day. The publishers that I'm working with now that I'm working with Tor, I, I love my editors. It's just been really, really positive. So you started doing self-publishing and then later on you got a publisher, a traditional publisher. So why did you start out self-publishing? Um, initially, I didn't have any expectations for the book. I wrote it for National Novel Writing Month last year in November. And uh, because I'm a narrator, I work with authors all the time. And I wanted to go through what they went through. So I published it, commissioned my art, got my edits done. And mostly, I just wanted to pay for my cover art and have some friends read it. Then things became very unexpected. So I never intended to do traditional publishing. Uh, several agents approached me after it released. and. Book talk and YouTube and Twitter made it a bigger deal than I had anything to do with, and uh, I decided why not? You know, it's a chance to see how things work on both sides. So I kind of got to do both, which is pretty cool. And now you're here in the UK, which is mad, really, really, really exciting. I feel like such an imposter sitting here with a bunch of authors in this room right now. Um, it's like I snuck in the back door. So in within a year, you have had done self-publishing and traditional publishing. So do you have any advice for people that look into maybe publishing their own work? Um, would you recommend starting with self-publishing or do you think the traditional route is the way to go? I think self-publishing is really, really viable. And I work with a lot of authors who are very successful self-published authors, six-figure self-published authors. And the fact that the tools are available to you to publish a professional book that people will actually purchase and read, the fact that you can do that now is frankly pretty amazing. There's, there's just no real barriers except your own willingness to invest your own time and money for editing and things like covers into producing that. So there's just nothing to keep you from doing it. Oh, brilliant. Um, so I think a lot of people are very excited to see what you will write next. Could you give like a small sneak peek for um, people that loved Legends of Latte? What can we expect from you next? Uh, I just turned in the uh, the draft for book two, which is a prequel. It's set 20 years before Legends and Lattes when Viv the Orc is much, much younger. Um, it's still basically cozy fantasy, but it's certainly not about starting a coffee shop. And uh, it definitely has it has kind of a different trajectory than the other book. But hopefully people still enjoy it. It's got a griffin, which is basically like a very tiny griffin that is half pug, half owl. At the very least, it's got that going for it. Well, wow, that sounds brilliant. And the very last question, do you think that you are going to ever branch out of the cozy fantasy genre? Or do you think you found the genre you want to write? Um, I would definitely like to work in other genres. The, the thing that I care about most is that I'm really only re interested in writing stories that are character and like human focused about things that people deal with. So I'm probably not going to write a big multi POV epic fantasy. I mean, never say never, but that's 
usually I'm more attracted to personal stuff, but that could be anything. I like almost all genres. I like horror. I like fantasy. I like sci-fi. Um, and I would I would hate to only be able to write books about people starting coffee shops. So <laughs> maybe a cozy horror. <laughs> exactly. Well, we were just talking about this. Uh, you know. What about all these beleaguered werewolves and vampires? They probably got more, con you know, mundane concerns. Yep, Dracula with identity struggles or something. Exactly. That'd be great. Well, if you're looking for a cozy story, I could highly recommend checking out Legends of Latte, one of my favorite books of the year. Thank you so much, Travis, Travis for doing this interview. Thanks so much. And I just want to say a special thanks to my patrons who support what I do here. It means the world to me. Thank you so much.